This show is designed to really glorify Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Welcome to Testimonies of Jesus. I'm your host, Dr. Baker. Okay, we have a special guest with us, Penny. Uh, Penny, how you doing this morning? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Listen, I wanted you to uh, tell us a little bit about, we, of course, we're dealing with healing and deliverance. We're dealing more on the deliverance side today. And uh, we are uh, just a couple, having a couple of testimonies we're going to share. But I want you to, for our viewers, if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, maybe when you started in, in, with the drug addiction, uh, you know, how, how old you were and how long you've had, had the drug addiction before the Lord delivered you. type of environment uh, when you I mean of course you know the Bible says sin is pleasure before a season but as a child or 10 12 year old child how did it feel when you started using drugs it actually it wasn't anything different it was kind of like it was normal and besides the things that had taken place in my home or the, the drugs and the alcohol were actually kind of a getaway on top of being pleasurable so it was a mix gotcha so and yeah, definitely. And the Bible, of course, the Bible says sin is pleasure before season. Of course, and and I'm sure. So a lot of lot of problems at home, a lot of pressures, and of course, uh, somebody may be watching right now, and you you're on drugs, and you want to get free from it now, but there's this is a means of escape. How important is it uh, to be able uh, really to get to a point where you realize, hey, you need deliverance? How how important is that? I believe it's extremely important. I went year in, year out, and I wanted to quit, but I absolutely couldn't because I didn't know that there was other things that needed to be dealt with. It wasn't until I was at the verge of suicide and giving up and knew that I was going to end up losing my family. So it is extremely important. Yes. Uh, and somebody may be watching right now and hearing this testimony. She said a key thing. you got to get to a place... She, she admitted she was in an addiction state. She couldn't stop. Uh, she got to what I'm hearing is the end of herself. She got to a point of the end of herself uh, where she knew she needed to do something. Uh, take us through that. You just, you just mentioned about the suicide. What happened? Uh, what, what, what kind of attempt did you try to do at that point? I had often suicide attempts and, you know, cutting on myself growing up. Mm -hmm. And I quit for years, but... In December of 2015, I was to a point of, I didn't have many drugs, so I would take alcohol if I couldn't find drugs. At 1 or 2 a.m., I was mixing Xanax and the liquor fireball. Wow. Saying, Lord, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm going to take myself out. And then a brother in Christ who was a former meth addict who got delivered messaged me and asked if I was okay. Mm-hmm. And I knew that was God intervening. So I got up the next day and I found a Celebrate Recovery to at least to reach out. And that did well for a while. Then something happened in 2016, in the beginning, that started the emotions and feelings again. Uh -huh. And then I was in a downward spiral of, spiral of using and mm -hmm. just wanting to commit suicide again. Wow. Uh, if you just caught the broadcast, we're talking to Penny. Uh, well, she's given her testimony. Uh, you know, it's tremendous. Somebody out there may be watching you. You're right now. You're bound. You feel hopeless. You might be in a state where you've even attempted suicide and you just want out. Uh, and I know, uh, Penny, of course, we've talked about this before. We know this is, of course, a demonic spirit that's, uh, you know, holding anything that's binding or whatever. We know that uh, it's a demonic force at work. But you said something key, and I want to touch on this a minute. You talked about your feelings. Uh, tell me about those kind of feelings that you were having that got you at that point because somebody needs to hear that. You know, feelings are connected. Uh, how you feel is connected uh, to, you know, in other words, dealing with your feelings to get freedom. Uh, tell us some of the feelings that you had that put you in that state where you felt like, hey, this is the best 
uh, thing I can do is go ahead and commit suicide. Tell me about those feelings. Well, I knew I loved God, and people would call me a hypocrite often. Mm -hmm. But I knew I had something hidden within me where I just felt like I was hopeless. Mm -hmm. That all I could see is the past I came from, mm -hmm. and I was repeating a pattern of how I grew up. And I believe I was actually oppressed gotcha. to the point of it was just dark. I would stay up at night, and I was like, Lord, I don't even want to live. Just let me sleep so I don't have to feel this way. It was literally a feeling of emptiness that moved within, and it almost felt like a darkness, if that is explainable. Mm -hmm. And I could see my five children and my husband. Lord, they would be so much better off without me, mm -hmm. because I seen, I felt like I was taking on the same thing that I grew up in, and I did not want to ruin their lives, or at least that's what the enemy would tell me. Right. It even came to a point where he would tell me, you can walk in this life and suffer walking with Jesus knowing that you might get relief while you're alive. Mm. Or you can just end your life right now and end up in hell. Or so he told me I was going to hell mm -hmm. and not have to worry about suffering in this life and dragging your family down. Wow. Wow, wow. You know, um, and I'm here, you know, some people, you may be watching now, you, you, you feel in the same exact way she felt. I mean, you, you tried the Lord, you asked the Lord to come in your heart, but yet, and this is what I've taught so much, the Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh, so there was an there was a eye opening moment uh, that you your eyes opened and you you begin to realize that there was a truth, there was some truth that you received. Uh, tell us that moment where uh, this is after you tried to commit suicide, all that where you began to hear truth and you knew it was true and you started going toward freedom. Tell us about it. Because let me, let me ask, let me mention this too. You mentioned Celebrate Recovery. That's a group. Uh, tell, tell me a little bit about the Celebrate Recovery so people can know what that is. Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered group. Mm -hmm. The Narcotics Anonymous and AA, they know that it's a spiritual issue mm -hmm. whenever we're addicted, mm -hmm. but they will not give you the steps you know, that leads you to God. Right. So Celebrate Recovery is completely the opposite. It's Christian steps. It's a Christian group for any kinds of hurts, habits, and hang-ups, not just addictions. And they gather so many times a week mm -hmm. or a month at a local church or home, mm -hmm. and they fellowship, and they go through, say, different steps, or just, you know, you're able to do what you're usually not able to do, talk mm -hmm. openly about addiction mm -hmm. or whatever's, you know, bothering you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, I know you mentioned the Celebrate Recovery didn't get it. It didn't get it. It felt, it filled a little bit of a void of needing to talk, mm -hmm. but it didn't get it. It was just going in circles. Gotcha. So, so tell me the moment where things begin to change. Uh, tell me what the, the, the beginning process is as you remember it. The beginning process, I remember it clearly. It was the month of August 2016. Mm -hmm. I had actually, you would come along and you would message some encouraging words under things that I would write. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of hooked me by <laughs> saying through Messenger that you published books and, you know, it got my attention. Mm -hmm. So we spoke a little, and the more that you would write to me, I'm like, you know, there's just something, there's a, a feeling different here. It's like something was kind of, the words you spoke, you were genuine. Okay. So in the month of August, I still continued my behavior of going out all night and drinking and, you know, having to be found or dry, even driving drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, August, what was it? I believe it was August 16th. I was at a bar mm -hmm. and I was heavily drunk and I started using a drug I'd never touched, which was cocaine. Mm. And my husband came and he found me in that bar, but he was not angry. Right. And I told him, I can't go home with you. You won't hold me accountable because I clearly heard God tell me in that bar while doing cocaine, if you don't stop, you're going to die. Right. And all I could think of besides God and my family was you. And I messaged you mm -hmm. a few dots, just dots. That was it at 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. And you immediately responded back and asked me what was up. And right. you took the time and you began to minister to me after 1 a.m. in the morning. Okay. And that's when I knew God was 
Let me, let me mention some key things, uh, what you just shared. Psalms 107, 20 says, He sent His Word and healed them and, and delivered them from their destruction. So you have uh, healing and deliverance through the Word. Now, one of the things you said, which is key, the words that was released. Okay, uh, the words we share, they have to be led by the Holy Spirit and they have to be anointed. Uh, Psalms 107 20 when it says he sent his word talking about the word of God and healed them and it says and delivered them from their destructions the spirit of God was able to release words at a point okay and when those words were released those words caused a breakthrough that's that's a key right now so somebody may be watching this and you feel like hey I, I, I know where she's at I feel exactly what she's felt you need the Word of God. Even listen to this broadcast. There's an anointing right now. If you can just grab a hold to the Word. Uh, Penny, you know, I, 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 we talked, uh, you and I and your husband, Mark, we talked extensively. And one of the things we talked about is accountability. You mentioned that. Oh, yeah. uh, how important is accountability in this process? Accountability is something that is probably besides God. It's like right up under there because we'll continue to do the same things if somebody doesn't hold a mirror to our face and say, look what you're doing. Yes. Especially if you want freedom. Yes. If you don't have some kind of accountability, then you're just going to wander right back to where you came from. Yes. <laughs> but I'll tell you, unless your heart is genuine, the accountability is going to offend many people. Yes. Because it's not what they want to hear. Believe me, I was hurt. I was angry. Even at you. But right. it wasn't you, it's what I was going through. And I'm like, right. God, has it really come to this? Right. I have to be monitored <laughs> because of my behavior. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, that was, yeah. That's, and that's normal. Uh, it's a normal thing because, and, and believe it or not, we got patterns uh, where, where we feel like, you know, it's almost like being put in a situation like a kid. Any, any type of, uh, the Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there's, there's safety. And, and oftentimes we feel like, hey, I'm grown. I don't need nobody to tell me what to do. But the Bible also says iron sharpens iron. So when you have uh, other people of God that can speak into your life, uh, you know, they have the anointing of God and the words of God in their mouth. It's definitely going to help. So uh, if you're watching right now, we're, we're interviewing Penny Wells. She's been delivered from so many things, from not just the drugs, but, you know, drugs were a symptom of greater things it was woundedness and hurt but now you begin to fill your life up what tell tell our viewers some of the things I, I, I put some requirements out like get staying in the word in prayer uh, you talked about your prayer closet tell our viewers about some of the times when you fought uh, urges even after you got clean okay you fought urges and what you had to do as far as your prayer, prayer closet first thing was to learn to walk in the spirit because I knew I, I may have known about God. I was spiritually weak yes. because I wasn't consuming the word. And there would be nights where your spirit would be in witness with mine where I was struggling. I would feel suicidal or, you know, the urge to want to use. And right. I would literally go in my closet and close the door and I would pray. I'd turn the light off and I'd pray and I'd cry out to God because I knew the darkness that I would have went back to if I gave in with yes. greater than yes. the momentary darkness. Yes. So I had to pray and I had to push in like my life depended on it because it did. Key, that's a key thing you just said, Penny. Uh, you know, I remember many nights you talked about, you know, you would text me a message and say, hey, I'm in the battle, and I would, you know, we would join and touch and agree in prayer. But you hit that prayer closet, and that's what I want some people to hear. When you spend time in prayer, crying out from your heart, and, and you're putting everything on the line. You, you're saying, God, if you don't show up, nothing can be done. God's presence, God's tangible presence would visit you. And I remember the presence of God would be so strong. And I'm, I'm saying this because the Bible says it's the anointing, which is the presence, the presence and the power of God. It says it destroys the yoke. Uh, drugs and any other issues that you can't stop is, is a bondage. It's actually... It's like Satan puts a chain over you in that area and he, has, he assigns a demon force to drive that behavior. But through prayer and, and the presence of God, I also remember 
you know, you got in prayer, you got in the word, and you also got in worship. Worship was the key. And through the presence of God, and this is what we're saying, Jesus is still a deliverer. But we have to have that tangible presence of God. So I, I'm thanking God for your freedom and your deliverance. And, of course, I've seen you grow like crazy. Tell me the impact that's had in your household. In my household, there's actually a whole lot more peace because, you know, I've got five children. The issues in my life had already driven one to move out. She was about to turn 18. But the ones that were left in the house that seen the change didn't have to wonder if, you know, is mom going to the bar tonight? Is dad going to have to go find her? Right. Is, is she going to come home? Is she going to die? But, but the word of God is actually more open in our home. Yes. And there's talk of things that weren't there before, like not just the word of God, but the signs and miracles and healings and deliverance. And my children have even been able to see it take place in other people's lives. Amen. Amen. I, so, I've seen, I've heard testimonies that you, it's, it's so amazing. I've, I've heard pe people you've prayed for that's been healed of sicknesses and diseases since that time. It's really been a blessing. Uh, go ahead. I'll let you finish your comment. No, it is a blessing. You're right. But um, I think whenever I had first gotten help from you, you went first for my marriage as in restoring the covenant. And once the covenant of marriage was restored, that relationship grew. And my husband is now to a point where he wants to know more about God. Amen. He's open to a lot more things, and he can actually see more things of God around him when he looks. That's right. So it, it's actually the freedom has opened up doors in many areas. Now, the enemy has tried to come back and hit some of my teenage children, but immediately warfare would take place and the enemy's not winning yes. so that's you know we had ups and downs but all in all it's like it's never been before amen there's a peace restored in the house amen you know uh, the word shalom means nothing broken nothing missing and okay. and when god uh jesus christ is our peace and when he comes in Hey, he does restore. It's a process. It's not, it's not, of course, we know this. It's not always, it's not God's issue. It's our issue to receive whatever he's doing. It takes time. But I, I, like I said, I'm elated. I, I'm thinking about one scripture before I let you go. Uh, this is in Psalms 133, 1 through 3. This is for our viewers that's watching this. Uh, you mentioned about the marriage covenant being restored. Uh, the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So you and Mark begin to walk in agreement. And because of that, the presence of God begins to flow in your household. I tell people, if you want freedom in any area, it takes the presence of God. I don't care what, what you're dealing with. You know, it could be somebody gambling right now. I got a gambling problem. Somebody can have a pornography problem. It doesn't really matter. The presence of God will break any issue. So uh, that's, that's key, and, and, and uh, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I, I've talked to Mark, of course, more, more than one occasion. I'm glad to see his, his walk, you know what I mean, from the, time, from the first time we talked. But uh, anyway, I'm going to let you run, and we just pray blessing uh, over you in this, in this season. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me on. Amen. God bless you. You too. Hi, I'm Beverly Baker, co-owner of Auto Mart Sales proud sponsor of Testimonies of Jesus, and we have a used car lot um, located in Inman, South Carolina. To take a few minutes and watch this YouTube of one of the cars that we have out there for sale at the present. We have this 2008 Pontiac Torrent, and it's got 183,000 miles. It's a five-seater and it has a little hatchback opening. It's actually an SUV, and we're offering it for $69.95. This is a 2008 Pontiac Torrent. It's a five-seater with 183,000 miles, and we're asking $69.95 for this one. Call us today at 864-473. 0220, that's 864-473-0220. Our email address is amscars903 at gmail.com. That's amscars903 
903 at gmail.com. All right, we also have a 2003 Mazda MPV van. We're asking $4,400 for that one. It's a nice blue color. It's got room in the back. Actually, I think this one is a seven-seater. A little short compact van, Mazda MPV. Call us today at 864-473-0220. That's 864-473-0220. We're asking $4,400 for this one. Website address is www.automartsellsllc.com and the email address is amscars903 at gmail.com. That's amscars903 at gmail.com. We're, we're here talking with Summer, Summer McGriff. How you doing? Good. I wanted to ask you, uh, we're, we're talking about healing and deliverance today, uh, but I want to talk about, you know, I know you've adopted uh, children. I just want to talk to you about your brief uh, encounter. I know you had a child that you uh, adopted from a mother who was actually drug addicted. Uh, tell me about that process. Uh, when did that happen? When you had the when the tests were done, uh, I know you told me that the test showed she was positive for the drugs, um, and I know that that was kind of disheartening. Uh, tell me the kind of a few things you went through at that point once you knew, you know, you she, you thought she was pretty much straight this time, but then you found out she's not. Uh, tell me kind of what was going on at that point. Step and say something right there. You know, it's 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 very. Uh, a lot of people don't know about drug addicted babies, and this, you just re really shed a lot of light that a lot of them don't make it, and that's the thing that people don't understand. But when you talked to me from the beginning, I knew, uh, you know, because you you were, I knew, I remember the battle you were in. Like, should I adopt a child? Not adopt this child? And I, I knew in my heart that child, God was giving you that child. I knew that. Because God knew you would do the right thing uh, by the child. And, and of course, we're, the, the testimonies of Jesus is, is really to glorify Jesus Christ. That he's the same. That he doesn't change. And Jesus loves children. Uh, he, he, he loves for parents to, to trust, you know, trust him with their children. Because if he can get us to trust him, he can deliver. 
So you got the test results, and I know you went through a change, and there's the fear in the house, and everybody's concerned. But but tell me, uh, when the doctors ran the test, I know they were concerned. And then at that point, uh, it was was it the second week you came uh, to service? I can't remember. Uh, or, after she was born, I think, what, wasn't it like the second week after she was born, or the, maybe the third, I'm not sure. Yes, because she was born on a Friday, she was actually not even a week old yet. Right, that's right. I mean, yeah. That's because right. We became, um, I think she was born on a Friday, if I remember right. Yeah. And we were out, I think, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and then we were home Monday night, and then we were home Tuesday night, and then we were home Wednesday night, and then we were home Thursday night, and then we were home to get the baby and pray for the baby. Now, um, that after we prayed for the baby, and I'm going to go back to that point when we prayed over, but before, right after we prayed, didn't she have a doctor's appointment? Like, wasn't it Tuesday of that week? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, she that's... Had her, she, was, she had to go to weekly appointments because she wasn't gaining weight. Um, she had been trying to lose weight for the past Okay. She, um, she had to go weekly to her appointments for checkups to make sure um, that there were no other signs of withdrawals or that she would start gaining weight because she had dropped below her birth weight right. while she was in the hospital. Um, and we went that Tuesday. I think we came to church that Sunday and that Tuesday she had her appointment. Right. And they drug tested her. Um, her drug test was back from Uh -huh. um, right, right after she was born, um, and the doctor looked at the screen, and he said, I'm just going to have to show you this, because there's no way to explain it, and I almost knew at that point, like, I immediately started crying of happiness, because I knew what he was going to say, you know, and he said that there was no drugs in the baby system whatsoever, and he said, I, I can't even explain that, I looked at him, and I said, I can't, I said, it was nothing but God, and a uh -huh. lot of faith. Amen. And she's not had a problem since. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna we we're going off the air. We're closing here. But uh, Sunday, we the Lord had me pray over your hands, over your daughter's two daughters' hands, anointed. And the Holy Spirit said, "The anointing of God, as y'all carry and touch the child, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will drive that stuff out of her system." That was on a Sunday. Tuesday, she gets to report nothing in the system. So somebody may be watching this as we go off the air. Summer, thank you for being with us. No problem, thank you. Uh -huh. You may be watching this right now and you heard the testimony of the Lord coming in and cleaning the, the baby system out. God can do that for you or anybody else. So right now, we just thank God. We're going to go off the air. Father, we thank you for the presence and the power of God. And we thank you that you're touching and healing people and delivering them and setting them free. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll see you next week on the Testimonies of Jesus.